Okay. Um, so now we want to look at characteristics of the graph. So yesterday we looked at the graph and we kind of matched that up with what the equation would look like. And today we're going to kind of look at the equation and just say, just by looking at the equation, I can tell you what the characteristics are. Right? So we've got our linear, f of x equals ax plus b, where a can't be 0. Right? If a is 0, you're looking at f of x equals b, which is a constant, which is just that horizontal line. Right? And that's really not part of the course. It's the horizontal line. We've got the quadratics, ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. And again, a can't be 0, because if a were 0, it wouldn't be a quadratic. And the cubic, in general, ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus c, where a cannot be 0. The leading coefficient is a. It's the coefficient of the highest degree term. So a in all of the above. And we, again, we're just going back into this chart. Let me figure out how to move the page. There we go. We're just going to go into this chart and say, so if we graph 1 half x minus 6 for y1, it's g of x or y2 is negative 5x plus 2. So let's pull out a graph and calculator. I'm just going to move it over here so we can do this one. And uh, I'm just going to clear it I'm using it with another class. So one nice thing about the color version is when we graph y1 as it'll come out in blue and y2 in red. What you can do if you don't have the color version, you're graphing a couple of graphs and you're not really sure which one is which. So I'll show you. We'll do y1. So one half x. You can do that as if I'm going to put a fraction in, um, you can do the fancy fraction. So alpha f1 takes up, it'll do a numerator over denominator. It'll look like an actual one over two. Um, not all the calculators do that though. So easy way is just go bracket one divided by two bracket. So there's my half, right? And that'll work on any of the TI 384 or whatever. And then toss in the x and then minus six. Okay, and if I hit graph, it's going to graph that uh, in blue. And there we go. Um, what degree is this? Let's kind of split this. We'll say uh, f of x. Actually, you know what? Let's do this. We'll do f of x, and we'll do g of x. So a straight line is always of degree 1. How many x-intercepts? Can't quite see it, but we can see how many. If it's a straight line, then there will be 1 x-intercept, right? What is the y-intercept? So we can get that from the equation, or we can count on the graph. Negative six. Negative six. I didn't want to answer them all. What's the end behavior? Well, that's quadrant one, that's quadrant two, that's three, that's four. What's the end behavior? Yep. Yeah. So Q3 to Q1, right? So we know it's going up to the right. Because right, we're starting in Q3, which is the bottom left, and we're moving to Q1, which is the top right. So we have to be going up as we're going to the right. And when we talk about up to the right, we're talking about as we're going from left to right. And we talk about which Q quadrant to which quadrant. Again, we're always going left to right. So as we go from left to right, we're going from Q3, which is down here, to Q1, which is up here. That's up to the right. It's linear. It's got a positive slope, so we know that, right? And so we in here, let's just say a is greater than uh, 0. a is a positive number, so that's when we're going to go q3 to q1. What's the domain for every polynomial function we're going to study this unit? 
Yeah, x is an element of the reals. You could say x e r. We we know what we mean by that. It's not actually an e, but it's yeah. What's the range? Y is y yeah, so instead of all y, such so the y is an element of the real. This is kind of the formal domain. So if they're writing something out on the diploma, they're probably going to give you a formal domain statement. You know, the set of all uh, x such that. Um, and if there was a restrict, well, then we'll do that on the quadratic, right? Because there will be a restriction on the quadratic. Um, let's go do graph two. So that is negative 5x plus 2. So you want the negative, that's down here in parentheses, down under the 3 in the entry key. This is the subtraction operation. So if you go minus here, it's not going to know what you're talking about. So you're trying to subtract from something, but you haven't given me anything. So I want negative 5, okay, x plus 2. Now, if you have a grayscale calculator, this is going to come out um, in grayscale, right? And if you graph them both, if you entered them both at once, if you didn't know that a negative slope was going down to the right or its behaviors, right, then you might not be able to tell the two lines apart. But one thing you could do, so pretend these are the same color, is uh, go down here. Go over to this, and if I hit enter, um, so I could change the color, but we're pretending that uh, you have the color, but I can change the line, so I could make it like what I'm just going to do is just make it uh, a dotted line. Okay, so you could do that on your grayscale pattern and change one so that it's a dotted line. What I'll do is I'll change it to blue as well. Okay, so now we'll say okay. And we'll say graph. So on a grayscale calculator, this would be your y1, the solid line, and then this would be your y2, the dotted line. Okay, but you have to tell them apart. Now we know, or we should, right? We should know the characteristics now. So what are the characteristics of g of x? It's of degree has how many? One. Has a y-intercept of two. 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 Um, has n behavior? Yeah, q2 to q4. Our a value is less than zero, right? That tells us we're going down to the right, or an a value less than zero. Okay, domain and range, same. So all linear functions have the same domain and range. As a matter of fact, all odd degree functions. And how many turning points? None, right? It's a straight line. So all odd degree functions, so the linear and the cubic, which are the only two we study, but if we did a fifth degree or a seventh degree or a ninth degree, would have, the degree would change, right? The y-intercept would be just the constant term, whatever that is, right? We looked at that yesterday. If the a value, the leading coefficient, were positive, all odd functions, 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, would go from q3 to q1. And if the leading coefficient, oops, the, in front of the highest value, right, um, is negative, then all odd will go from q2 to q4, right? That's their end behavior. Their domain is always x belongs to the real and y belongs to the real, right? So if you're going from 3 to 1, then you're covering every y value, right, all the way down to negative infinity, all the way up to positive infinity. And the same with this guy, only well, it's going up to the left, right, or down to the right. Okay, negative slope, slope is rise over 1, we go down, which is negative, and we go right, which is positive, negative over positive is that negative slope, so down to the right. All right, let's move over here and go look at the quadratics. Uh, let's call this y1 and we'll call this guy y2. Let's go to y equals. So I'll leave it as, as the blue and I'll leave it. 
if I don't change the thing to the dashed line or whatever. And uh, so let me just clear that out of there. So we'll go negative 2x squared uh, plus 2x plus 4. And hit enter. And enter x squared. x squared minus 6x plus 12. Minus 6 x plus 12. Okay, so when I hit graph, the solid blue line, actually, if you're looking at your calculator, the first one that's drawn is the first one. That is not like hit a cube on that guy. Oh, I didn't get a uh, plus 2x. See, I was looking at a cubic and I thought, wait a sec. So what happened was I missed the plus sign, so I'm just going to insert that one. And so I took the negative 2x and the 2x beside it and multiplied them and got negative 4x cubed. So, wait, wait a minute, that's not a quadratic. So the first one, so the first one drawn, if you're looking, like if you didn't distinguish one from the other with the dotted line, you see the second one's got the dotted line, so that's the second one. Okay, and they're both blue in this case, but, but if you're watching, the first one drawn is y1, the second one drawn will be y2. So, um, what degree? Uh, they're both quadratics, right? So they're both of degree 2. So the first one, the solid line, has how many x-intercepts? Oh, uh, two. Two. Mm -hmm. And the second one has how many x-intercepts? Zero. Zero. The y-intercept of the first one is? Four. The y-intercept of the second one is? Twelve. Twelve, right? Now, we can't see it because of this, so I'm just going to kick the window up a little on the y-value. Let's say we go to 14, just to get up a little higher, so we can see the 12. So we know it's there, right? Just looking at the equation, we know this. We don't need the graph. Right? We don't need the graph to do any of this. Um, but there, you can see it's at 12. Right? That it's crossing through there. Uh, end behavior. So the end behavior for the first one, which is the solid line, is... You... Yep. Uh, the first one is Q3 to Q4. Yeah. And the second one is Q2 to Q1. And let's go with that saying, so the first one has an A value, which is less than zero. It's a negative, right? So we know this from 20. A negative quadratic, right, opens down. Okay, so just think, all you got to do is, if you say there's a negative, just draw yourself you know, you can just draw yourself to oh, like a negative quadratic, okay, it'll down. All right, that's going to be Q3 to Q4. You know, oh, I got a positive quadratic, that opens up. Okay, it's going to be Q2 to Q1. So, and that's if A is greater than zero. That holds for every even degree. Okay, so if you go on and you're doing 30 dash 1, then every even degree, you just know if it's an even degree polynomial and it's got a leading coefficient which is positive, it's going to go Q2 to Q1. They're just going to use slightly different words. They're going to say it's up in Q2 and it's up in Q1, right? The same concept. Domain of every polynomial. And now range, what's the range? So if we want to get the actual range, we are going to need the maximum for y1, right? So I'm going to do this. So we go second calc max, maximum. It asks, you've done this, right? 20. So it asks you for the left bound. So you just go to the left of the maximum. It asks you for the right. You move over to the right-hand side. And it asks for a guess, so you just move up to about the top. So it's negative 0.4, 9, So we're going to call, or sorry, um, that's the x value. Y value is 4.5. Okay. 
<laughs> so what can we say about the y? I'm going to give a little bit more space here. Set of all y is such that y is what? No, that was the x. That was my bad. The x is 0.5, but the y is 4.5. The y belongs to the reals. And then this guy, set of all y, such that y. So if it opens down, it has a maximum. And you might just be asked, you might just state the range as y is less than or equal to some maximum value. Right, which we don't know. If, if we weren't given the equation to graph, we might not know. Two second calc. This time we're going to do the minimum. So to switch from graph one to graph two, I'm just going to use the up or down arrow, and it'll just jump from one graph to the other. And it wants a left bound, so I'm just going to move closer to the bottom. Hit enter. Wants a right bound, so I got to move past the minimum and back up a little bit, and then a guess. And hit enter. And we can see that y equals 3. So it's a set of all y such that y is yeah, greater than or equal to 3. Y belongs to the rails. How many turning points in y1? And in y2? So a quadratic needs exactly one turning point, right? It must turn. Otherwise, it's linear. If it doesn't make a turn, it's just a linear graph. So it has to turn. And it can only turn once. If it turns twice, then it's going to be a cubic. Okay. So it can only turn once. And now, cubic. Bring that back. Move that over. Okay, graph uh, f of x. Say f of x is g of x. Now they're cubics, right? Do we even need to graph them to do this? Why don't we try filling in the chart and we'll graph and take a look at the graph. So what degree is a cubic? So it's degree three. How many x? Okay, so x intercepts, we might have to graph that, right? Because we know cubics can have how many x intercepts? At first. Oh, don't we have to do an h x too? Oh, man. We'll do the British. We'll do h of x. Well, we don't even have to graph it. Okay, so for x-intercepts, yeah, we will have to graph. What is the y-intercept for f of x? One. What is the y-intercept for g of x? What is the y-intercept for h of x? What is the end behavior for f of x? Cubic, cubics have the same end behavior as what? Linears. Linears. What would be the end behavior of a linear with a negative slope? Q2 to Q4. Q2 to Q4. Right, we'll say A is less than 0. G of X. What's the end behavior? G of X has a positive. Leading coefficient would be the same as a linear positive, right? A slope up to the right, q3 to q1. And for h of x, or h of x, so positive or negative leading coefficient. I'm pretty close to it, I don't see one. So q3. So positive. You don't have to memorize, right? You don't have to sit there and say, I can memorize the cubics. What did it say? Odd degree. Positive. Goes up to the right. As a matter of fact, 
what I would do if I was drawing that, just say, all right, so that first one is negative. It's going to be the same as this, right? Just a, a linear negative. So just don't draw a cube. Just draw a linear negative and say, okay, Q2, Q4. Positive. Okay. Just draw that. You should never be drawing anything other than a linear or a quadratic. Okay. And even if you're going on to 30 back one, you do. You never need to draw anything other than, oh, here's a linear with a positive coefficient in the quadratic. Uh, domain for everything is. And the range. Okay, you don't have to memorize anything special for cubics on domain or range. Their domain, the domain range of every odd degree function, first, third, fifth, seventh, ninth, whatever, is all real numbers. The range is all real numbers. Number of turning points, okay, so we're going to have to graph that. Right? That's what that is. But aren't they all just kind of curves and not turning points? Well, let's find out. So here we actually do have that. So sadly, uh, I'm just going to reset the calculator. So I'll get the three different colors. But, but here's the deal. You know the characteristics such that when we've graphed all three of these, you should be able to tell them apart, right? Even if they're all the same. As a matter of fact, maybe I'll just change these all so they're blue. But we'll be able to tell them apart. So negative two. Yeah. So enter these along with play along. Uh, one reason is you just want to be able to do this on the test, right? So if you're practicing along, if you're going to have any difficulties, then have them now. You don't want to have them on the test when you're sitting there and you're having problems graphing. Cube minus two squared minus fifth x plus three. So I know if I want to see the y-intercept of y two, then we would have to uh, change the window. Okay, I'm going to go over and just change them all to blue. And the same line. And blue. Okay. Graph. I'm going to turn around so that I just I see the order in their graph. You don't know which one's what. Uh, is this one you make graphing? In what way? Oh. Maybe. Yeah. There's there's regressions as well, right? So there's coming up with uh, so it, and it, it's a, a lot of the course there's regressions, right? Which is basically let's create a mathematical model for something. So regression is either we look at some actual data. Um, so next week when we do curves, I've got some actual data from a study, which I'll do. Um, I'll do forest because it's like entering 40 lines into the calculator, right? I'm sure, we all have better things to do except me with our lives and then enter 40 lines worth of data into the calculator. But I'll enter them and then we'll play with it, right? And then what we want to do is interpret. So it's about interpreting the model. We've created a model from some data. Here it is. What does it tell us? What can we do with it? Right? And that's what a lot of the math in this course is along those lines, right? Just understanding well, what do we do with it? All right, so I'm just going to erase the uh, quadrants. So I have three curves. So here's one here, looks like. Here's piece of wood. It's like, you know what? I think we need to make our window a little bit bigger. I think it's good this way, but I think we need to go a bit higher. So let's leave the axis. We'll see if, if it's good. Let's go. Maybe negative 50 to 50. Right? Let's go way up and way down. And we'll do that by, say, 10. 
and hit graph. So we're just playing, right? I just pick the numbers, okay, hey, let's make this. Okay, so there's one graph there. Going just a smidge higher than 50, but we can kind of see that this one kind of bounces out there. And there's the 35. There. Okay. So here's our first curve. Okay. It's a cubic. Um, how many x intercepts does it have? It could be one. It's kind of hard to say, right? Like, unless we actually look in on that one. So let's leave that for a second. Um, so that's f of x. Um, g of x is this guy. So how many x-intercepts does that have? That one, which is one. That's got two, right? One, two. So g of x has two. H of x is this one. And it has one x-intercept. Uh, number of turning points. So... This guy here, which was g of x, obviously has two turning points, right? One here, one here, two turning points. Uh, that was g of x. h of x is this one here, and it has zero turning points. Okay, it's never really turning around. It's always just kind of going up. It just sort of flattens out a bit and it heads up. So that's h of x has zero turning points. And I'm going to get rid of g of x and h of x. Oh wait, h of x was the so the x intercept that was h of x was one. It was f of x, but we're not sure. Not sure. Okay, so let's. So if you're graphing stuff like that and you're saying, you know what, I need to look at these one at a time. No, let's go here. Uh, actually, sorry. So on the equal sign, just hit enter on the equal sign. And hit enter on the equal sign. So notice that's a black square on the equals. It says graph this one, and these are just equal signs. It won't graph those. So I don't have to clear it in case I want to see it again. So if I clear it and I want to see it again, then I'd have to type it in again. Okay, if I just put that equals there. So that's uh, our f of x, and I just want to kind of look at this. Okay. I mean, it looks like it's just sort of coming down through and doing that. Maybe it is. And the way I'm going to do that, I'm going to use zoom, and I'm going to use a box number one. And so zoom box says, draw a little box. So what I do, I'm just going to arrow up a bit and arrow over, all the way over to the left, and arrow over to here, and I'm going to hit enter. And then I'm going to go down. This is a problem you won't have on your calculator. <laughs> and I'm going to go like way over that way, which I don't want to do, so I can come back in. Good enough. So it's just going to zoom in. I'm just sort of interested, okay, what's happening in here? Because sometimes it'll do a little bit like this on the axis. It might dip below and come back up above. But let's just take a quick, careful look here. And we can see, now nah, it's pretty much just cutting through there, right? Okay. So we can say, yeah, that has one x intercept. And let's just go zoom, standard, go back to standard window. Okay. All right. And turning points, looks like it had zero as well. You can't have one turning point, right? So we did that yesterday. We talked about how many turning points. You can have zero or you can have two. If you have one, then you're going to be a quadratic, right? You just turn around. All right, so let's summarize. The blank blank affects the end behavior of a polynomial function. So how do we know the end behavior? What are we looking for? Underlined up there. 
the leading coefficient. Right? So the leading coefficient. The blank affects the maximum number of possible x-intercepts, so the maximum number. So we know that uh, linear has one x-intercept, uh, quadratic has a maximum of two, and a cubic has a maximum of three. In this case, we didn't have three, we had one or two. But. So what is it that tells us? Quadratic 2, linear 1, cubic 3. So it's the degree, right? Degree 1, 1x one intercept. So the maximum number of possible, no, no, the maximum number of possible x intercept is the degree of the function, right? Is the degree. So not only does it affect it, but it also tells you what the maximum number is. Now remember, that's max. Without graphing it, you can just say max. It's a cubic. It could have three x-intercepts. We don't know. It has to have at least one because it has to cross through, right? It's going from low to high or high to low. So it has to have at least one. But it could have three. Or it could have two. When expressed in standard form, the what determines the y-intercept? Constant term. So the constant term. Just that last number. If it's not there, so if you had like 7x cubed plus 6x squared minus 5x, and that was it, then it is there. It's just a zero. It would be like plus zero. That would be the constant terms. The domain of all polynomial functions ever is. Real numbers, so the set of all x such that x belongs to real. The maximum number of turning points of a polynomial function. Okay, so a linear has how many turning points? Yeah. So degree one, zero turning points. Quadratic, degree two, how many turning points? One. Cubic, degree three, what's the most turning points? Two. So what's the relationship between degree and turning point? Yeah, degree minus one, right? So is one less than the degree of the polynomial? Polynomial. So remember, the, that's the maximum number of turning points. It's not the number, it doesn't tell you it's cubic, it has to have two turning points. It's cubic, it could have zero turning points, or two, because we know it can't have one turning point. Right? One turning point would be a quadratic. Three turning points, it would be a fourth degree. Okay. So if you could get a question on the test, even though we don't study beyond that, it just says, uh, What's the maximum number of turning points of a seventh degree function? Which would be what? Six, right? One less than the degree. Doesn't mean it has that. If it's odd, um, it, it could have no turning point. Right? But if it's odd, <coughs> it can't have one turning point. That'd be even. It can't have three turning points, right? Turn once, turn twice. Turn again, both ends would be going down. So it would have to be an even number of turning points. All right, give this a shot. I'm going to pause this and let you fill in the uh, chart. All right, so let's just run through this. Um, it's all filled in, so no calculator. And change this to the maximum number of x intercepts and the maximum number of turning points. Because without a calculator, we can't. Uh, state for sure, well, we can here for a quadratic. So it's a quadratic, it's got a negative leading coefficient. Degree 2, it has, this one actually has 2x intercepts because it opens down, but we know it goes up above. It's got a y intercept of 5, so it opens down, but it has to go through 5, so it would look something like this. 
Right, so it has to have two x intercepts, right? Because the quadratic could have one or none, but this one will have two. The y intercept is five, constant term. The end behavior is q3 to q4. Okay, you can sketch it out. Downward quadratic. Domain of every polynomial function is x belongs to the real. Quadratics have a range. This is less than or equal to some maximum number because it opens down. And it has one turning point. Every quadratic has exactly one turning point. Cubic, degree 3. Maximum number of x-intercepts is 3. The y-intercept is 1. That's a for sure. The end behavior is q3 to q1. That's a for sure. Positive leading coefficient. Remember, all we need is quadratics and linear. So this has the same behavior as a linear with a positive coefficient, which is up to the right. Um, for q3 to q1 domain, range of any odd degree is all real numbers, and maximum number of turning points is one less than the degree, so that's two. Linear, degree one, one x-intercept, the y-intercept is negative five, positive leading coefficient, q3 to q1, all real numbers, all real numbers, and this is for sure. So this is uh, exactly one. This is exactly zero. This is a max of two. An odd number with a negative leading coefficient. So the degree is odd. The number of x-intercepts is the odd number. If that was a seven, there'd be a maximum of seven. The y-intercept is six. It has a negative leading coefficient, so it's the same as the linear, which is negative, which is q2 to q4. Domain and range are both reals, and the number, maximum number of turning points is the odd number minus one. Matching, match each graph with one of the following polynomial functions, justify your reasoning. Right? So give that a shot. Look at the equations, look at the graph, you say, hey, which one matches? How much information do I need? One thing that you should be asking, right? How much information do I need? Um, what kind of graph is this? Cubic. Uh, what's the sign of the leading coefficient of this cubic? It's got a positive. So we're looking for a cubic, positive leading coefficient, and what else? Negative 5 as the constant term. So cubic, cubic, so doesn't have a negative 5, it's negative there, cubic doesn't have the negative 5, cubic, positive leading coefficient, negative 5, there you go, right? So you're just using a little bit of reasoning, okay, what's the next one? Quadratic, positive or negative leading coefficient. Okay, negative leading coefficient. So that's out, that's out, that's out. So it's either B or C. Which one is it? B. What tells you? Yeah, the y intercept, negative 1. C. What kind? Quadratic or cubic? Quadratic. Leading coefficient? Positive. Um, y intercept? Four. Okay. You know, y intercept four, which is that, that's a cubic. You know, y intercept four. Is that a four or? Ah, okay. So it's like four and a half. So. There we go. And the last one, cubic. Uh, what's this guy? Four. Is that four? Yeah. Okay. Four. Positive leading coefficient, 
Cubic positive 4, so my leading guy is G, that's a negative 4, that's it, so G. Okay? So you know all the characteristics, right? You can look at the graph and say, from this graph, it's a cubic, it's got a positive leading coefficient, it's got a constant term of this, there it is, that's the one. Or you can look at this guy and say, all right, so it's a cubic that goes Q. I mean, I wouldn't bother looking at these. There's too many to look at. It's easier to get your characteristics off of here. But just say, I'm looking for a cubic with a y-intercept of 5. And I don't see any y-intercepts of 5, so A is just not in here. right? So either way you can do. Working backwards, sketch a graph of a possible polynomial function. So if the range is the set of all y such that y is less than or equal to 4, what kind of a polynomial is it? Linear, quadratic, or cubic? It's got to be a quadratic, right? So linears and cubics have ranges which are all real numbers. y is less than or equal to 4 tells us that it opens which way? Up or down? Got to open down. So here's what we're going to do. So we're going to say, all right, there's four. Or sorry. Yeah, here's four. Uh, the y-intercept is negative six. So there's negative six. I got something that. Nice drawing. Start over. Okay, there's four. There's negative 6. There. Okay, so I've got a y-intercept of negative 6, and I've got a maximum value of 4. If you're drawing something like that, for me, make sure you've labeled the 4 and the negative 6. Okay, so you have to show things. Um, just show at least a couple of the key numbers in drawing this. Okay, does that make sense? It's not the only one you could draw. Okay. Draw another one, like this. Okay. But what we're looking for is that y-intercept and that it opens down and that it's a quadratic and that it has a maximum value of positive 4. Okay. N behavior is Q3 to Q4. What kind of, and has one turning point and a y-intercept of 2. All right, give it a shot. So which polynomial has one turning point, has an end behavior of q3 to q4, and y-intercept of 2. Right? And you're just drawing it, so just make sure you label stuff. So we need a y-intercept of 2, so I'm going to label 2. And other than that, I don't really have to do too much. Right? So q3 to q4, one turning point says it's a quadratic. Q3 to Q4 by itself says it's a quadratic, right? Or a fourth degree, but we don't do fourth degree. Okay, last one. And an application. The average retail price of gas in Canada from 1979 to 2008 can be modeled by the polynomial function P of Y is 0.008Y cubed minus, etc., etc., etc. Where P is the price of gas in cents per liter, and Y is the number of years after 1979. So a lot of times, when we model things, um, you know, we'll do it over a period of years, and you really don't want to be putting 1979 into a function, right, and 2008 into a function. So what's best to do in that case is to say, let's make 1979. That's going to be year zero. And so then y is the number of years after 1979. So what are the characteristics of this graph? Well, what kind of graph is it? Cubic. So it's a cubic. It goes from q what to q what? Goes from q3 to q1. Um, now, really, it's only described when y is 0 or higher, right? Like, it actually has a domain. It's weird because y is for years, but the domain. So the domain is going to be 
set of all y such that y is greater than or equal to zero. Okay. Now it's y is because it's years, right? Don't confuse that with y as being a range, right? It is a domain. It doesn't make sense to do negative years unless this model actually holds into the past. And then you could say, well, if we put in negative 10, we'll get the price of gas in 1969. Okay, but we're going to assume no, this model is from 1979 to 2008. What's the constant term in this context? Price of gas went in 1979, right? So 1979 is year zero. Put a zero in here, that's gone, that's gone, that's gone. And all we're left with is this. So it would mean gas was 25.720 cents per liter in 1979. 25 cents a liter? I mean, it's horrible that how many years later? 40 years later, it's a dollar a uh, dollar a liter? I pulled my car up for 105 meters today. Yeah, so that's 40 years later, right? 1979. So, yeah, it's quadrupled in price, but a lot of things have gone up in price at that point. Yeah, go ahead. I am, it will be, but we're done. Okay, we're done.